well techniques. The first one would be the bee frost. You already seen in the previous slides. Uh, this one is a very famous bot that being used in Chinese hacker community. And its Chinese name is called uh, Rainbow Bridge. And the, the phrase is actually from its icon being used. So you can see the icon is a rainbow bridge. So that's its Chinese name. And this B frost, uh, it, uh, it uses uh, code injection. So it's not DL injection, it uses code injection. So the only way you can find this uh, suspicious uh, uh, code injection, you have to scan the memory and then try to find the P image. And then you will notice that it, it try to do code injection into the IE browser, into IE browser. And then it will access a series of uh, URLs. And the first one, if you notice that, the first one it tried to access is uh, Microsoft.com. It actually tried to check if the network connectivity is available or not. And then it tried to access some uh, CNC servers. These CNC servers are actually uh, named after Chinese vocabularies. For example, the one that we highlighted is actually called uh, uh, may I know, you know, you ask a question, may I know, the phrase is called Qing Wen, may I know? Case number two is also a very famous one in Chinese hacker community, it's called GhostNet. Uh, the ori original official report is actually released by Canadian uh, researchers, uh, Shadows in the Cloud. Uh, and then uh, from the sample you can see that uh, uh, it tried to do, it tried to uh, install itself as a, a system DL file into the system. And then it will connect to a CNC server. When we try to reverse uh, this binary, we also identify the botnet commands that it can use. So you, you see all these botnet commands that this uh, ghost net can use. Uh, notice that this ghost net has nothing to do with the uh, ghost rat uh, malware. And then the string at the bottom, uh, it's, uh, it's how we find out uh, its original project name on that uh, malware uh, author's computer. It's actually called uh, CXP. So it's the original project name before uh, this mail will be in uh, compiled. Okay. And uh, the URL that we mark is actually one of the CNC uh, servers that this uh, malware sample try to connect to. And this uh, CNC server is also being mentioned in the shadow in the cloud report. The case number three is uh, dfn666.net uh, samples that we collected a uh, few months ago through the mass SQL injection attack that have been launched uh, recently, starting March. And uh, these uh, massive SQL injection attack, uh, these malware will use uh, shell as a cute, uh, as a cute uh, hook, meaning that it will affect your exporter so that uh, uh, once you get infected, it will try to connect to all these online games and then try to uh, steal your username and password for these online games. Uh, we have a very detailed story about this uh, massive e SQL in injection on our blog. And this one is still ongoing nowadays. So even though the, its first experience are, are back in March and it's still uh, ongoing. So the last one would be the Zeus bot. It's also another malware that we study. And uh, this one is a, a very famous one as well. Uh, you can see that uh, it's actually trying to use the win log on notify. So through the register key. And then it will infect every process you have on the system. And then it will connect to a CNC server. Then you will become a bot. The zoo spot is so famous that it, it even has its, its wiki page and one of the security vendor even named it called the king of bots. Its bonnet size is kind of like a 3.6 millions. 
So now we will go into how we do malware clustering because we already know so much about malware and then we, we know how to study them, we know how to do forensics on them, we know all their techniques. Then how, how do we do clustering? And then you might ask, you know, why do you have to do clustering? You already know it's a malware. So the reason behind this is very obvious. Then you can group those that are alike together. So the way we do malware clustering is we try to compute the similarity between these malware instances. And so our final result, we will have to come up with a similarity matrix, which is a score that indicates how similar any two instances are, are compared between each other. So we will build a similarity matrix of the malware samples that we collected. So among the test sets that we have, it's, a, it's more than 400 malware samples. We do forensic reports on all these malware samples. And then we try to extract the three significant features that we just uh, mentioned. Installation remnants, memory layout, and suspicious malware behaviors. And then all these features, they will have a, a score. They will have a score. And then for every malware that have this score, it will compare against another malware instance. And then you can get a similarity. And then we compare with every malware instance, you get a vector of similarities. And then finally, you get a, a matrix of similarities. And this is how we come up with the matrix after all. And then we automate this process through our tool called ZeroBox. So ZeroBox will scan all the malware samples that we have, make, make it execute, and then study it get a report, and then come up with the matrix, and then do the clustering. And then you will be able to group into different groups. Uh, in our test samples, uh, we actually have 408 malware samples that we collected uh, on the July on, on the 8th of July this year. Uh, because we have, a, we have a, a product called HackAlert that can scan websites for Trojans that are already on that website, and then we collect all these malware samples. And then uh, we also test against these malware samples on some uh, existing antivirus, and the hit rate is not that really good. Uh, some vendors have less than 20%, some vendors can have 50%. So these malware are really new. And how we do the clustering is through the k-means clustering. But we will not get into too much details on why we choose this one. But uh, the, the clustering uh, mechanism we use is k-means clustering. And you see the similarity matrix, and you see a lot of colors. The reason that it has a lot of colors is because we, we uh, model these scores into RGBs because we, we want to visualize it. Uh, humans ha uh, has more feelings with visual, uh, pictures, so we try to visualize it. And then if you look at the first block, uh, you see some patterns that are alike. Maybe you don't but we will get into that. So this is the first block, okay? Did you see any color patterns? Definitely you see a lot of color patterns, but actually there are some blocks that differentiate from uh, other blocks. So for example, if you look at the, the second line, you see the upper corner, there's some gray, gray colors, and then you see it becomes a little pink over the skin color, and then it becomes more purple, and then becomes uh, more like a pale white 
again. So it seems that you can see four blocks within this big block. Okay, so uh, simply by visualizing it, you already can group these colors into four blocks. I hope that you guys are not feeling dizzy. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and actually every line, as we mentioned, it's a, it's a similarity vector. How these malware instance compare against other malware instance. So every line represents a malware instance. And then we use the antivirus to double check whether it's a, a malware or not. And you can see all these malware uh, different namings used by these antivirus vendors. And then all these malware instances happen to be the same malware family, Cozy Bot, Zeus Bot. So even for the, the first uh, upper block, it's, it's all Z Bot. And then even the second block, it's all Z Bot. So a total of all these are uh, 26. These are all Zbot instance. And because there are some Zbot uh, variants, uh, instead of only believing in these antivirus, we actually try to do manual inspection by our own. We try to double check these are really Z uh, Zbot uh, malware instance, and then we try to find their versions so that we can tell uh, which variants they are. And there are actually some different uh, bot command in these uh, different Zbot binaries. So you can tell their different versions. So for version one, it has these commands. For version two, it has uh, another set of commands. So after our manual inspection, we are able to identify different Zbot variants. So the upper three blocks all belong to, all belongs to version two Zbots. And then the, the one on the, on the bottom are actually uh, Zbot version one. So uh, based on our experimental results, you see that out of 408 malware instance, uh, we manually identify there are 52 Zbot malware instance. And then among these 52 malware instance, Zbot malware instance, they can be clustered into four groups. One group is V1 variant, and then three groups are V2 variants. When we compare these uh, clustering results against antivirus results, they, are, they actually match with each other. So our malware clustering uh, have uh, the, the, the same accuracy as the antivirus. While uh, these antivirus tools, they are only able to identify 26 of them. While we can automatically cluster the all, the all uh, 52 uh, instance. So even though we don't have signatures, because we know how to cluster them, their colors tend to be similar. Their colors tend to be similar. Then we are able to say that, okay, these malware binary are actually a Zbot family. And then uh, in that big uh, block, we only look at the first block, right? So there are other blocks in that uh, pictures. There are also other malware families, including the, the Undo families and also the, the Bagel families, also a very famous uh, malware. So these, these malware instances, they also tend to be very similar. They have the same color patterns. So uh, the conclusion is that, uh, as you can see, the traditional uh, the traditional uh, hooking-based monitor approach already cannot uh, handle the modern advanced malwares because these modern advanced malwares, they know how to do a lot of anti, uh, 